I'm Michelle Beckham Corbin, president of C3, Creating Connections Consulting, a social media marketing strategy firm. And I'm Mark McCumber, president of McCumber Creations. Welcome to our show, Digitally Speaking. Well, we're really glad to uh, be back here in the studio of ACTV. And uh, for folks who are tuning into the show, um, as always, just a quick reminder that um, our last show, Show 18, was about social media trends for 2015. So uh, Lots of trends. Yeah, and I, I want to say, you know, thinking back to that show, Mark, um, I think one of the pieces that was most fascinating to me was the artificial intelligence piece where we mm -hmm. were talking about Baby X. Yes, and artificial intelligence is hot on the horizon, so... Lots of stuff coming up. We can't tell you all the good secrets, ladies and gentlemen. We just got a hot tip that something really big's happening. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, actually. Yeah, there, there is something, a big announcement uh, today. So, um, so anyway, today we're going to kind of move beyond um, the social media trends and really kind of get into the heart of the sociological side of social media. So in other words, you know, last show we talked about um, kind of what worked in 2014, some of the uh, seemingly far-fetched things that are coming for this year as far as trends, but what does that all mean? What does that mean for us um, you know, as individuals? What does that mean for our communities? What does it mean for society? Um, because Mark, as we've talked for the last, I can't believe this is our third year, but uh, for the last uh, you know, three years or so, just about social media and um, you know, in, in terms of marketing and how businesses can kind of harness social media to um, reach their goals, right? And their goals are going to be to have someone purchase their products or mm -hmm. services, right? right? So really kind of, I don't want to say manipulating, but marketing is all about kind of manipulating the message to reach the people that you mm -hmm. need to reach. But what does that mean if we go deeper, you know, beyond the marketing aspect? What does it really mean for us as people? Well, there are a lot of dimensions to the impact of the digital age and social media on humanity, on society. And um, that's one of the great things that we have explored and we'd love to explore on the show here today. So let's get off to the races. You've got some good stuff over there. Yeah, and you know, I wanted to start off with a quote. Um, uh, there's a, a gentleman that I had the privilege to meet a couple of years ago um, who is very um, well-versed in, in social media trends and also the um, sociological side of social mm -hmm. media. His name is Brian Solis. And, um, cool name. Yeah, actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and Brian, you know, it's a long piece, but, but th at the end of this foreword that he wrote for a book called Rep, he, he said, online is the new real world, this is your life. Hmm. And I think that, you know, that quote really kind of plays into um, what we're going to be talking about today. You know, one of the things that um, can seem very big brother-ish, stalker-ish, is data mining and mm -hmm. the whole emerging field of social media research, mm -hmm. where uh, people, companies, social scientists are going in and they are trying to learn as much as they can about us. So mm -hmm. I wanted to share a couple of examples. Um, Microsoft uh, was mining online communities and it helped them to identify women who were at risk of postpartum depression. Hmm. Another example comes from Facebook and um, Facebook has obviously been doing a lot of research on us, which I'll, I'll get to in a minute, but uh, one of their studies showed that 71% of people um, drafted at least one post that they've never posted. I know I personally have done that many times because I'm not an instant poster. I kind of write what I'm gonna say, I take a second, I reread it, mm -hmm. and I think, is that really something that I want anybody to see? And I'll hit delete. Little did I know that Facebook is keeping track of that. Nice. Yeah. They keep a copy for you in case you delete it and you want to get it, retrieve it later. <laughs> Secret copy, right? Uh -huh, I'm sure. <laughs> They're reading all of our stuff, uh -huh. that's right. Um, another another uh, research study with Facebook, although to me this is really kind of intuitive, but um, they analyzed over 400,000 posts and found that children's communication with parents decreases in frequency from age 13. 
but then rises when they move out of the house. Well, I mean, you don't really need to examine a lot of posts. Yeah, to that's not, that. that's not that's a no-brainer there, right? I mean, that, hey, mom, can I have some money? That's <laughs> you know, I mean, teenagers don't want to be in communication <laughs> right, with right. their parents. So yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> um, and then uh, there was a report that came out last month. It's kind of a long title, but it was called "Experimental Evidence of Massive Scale." Emotional contagion hmm. through social networks. Wow. I'll make sure that's on the screen because that's write an algorithm a, for that. <laughs> that's a, a big title, but um, one of the one of the things that that particular report discovered um, was that, and I don't know if you if you heard about this, Facebook was actually manipulating the newsfeed. They were doing a study where, for a certain number of people, they were only showing stories that were negative or sad. And they mm -hmm. measured what people's actions were after being exposed mm -hmm. to just kind of the sad stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, were their personal posts also negative and sad? Sure. And and people, when they found out, were just in an uproar about that. Well, I, I mean, think if you really think about that and how this whole thing is being engineered <clears throat> in the study of artificial intelligence, the whole thing is about trying to um, figure out ways to, to write algorithms to replicate emotion. We were talking about this in the last episode. So it's all about mechanizing, using math to figure out how these and finding the formularies that, that can predict the outcomes. And that's a huge tool for good or bad, good indifferent, or bad. Um, depending on who's using it, I guess. And that's where this is going and why the impact of this particular topic that we're talking about is so um, pertinent, is so in the moment right now because we are truly on the verge of some major, major change and the impact that all of this has on us, um, both the information age and social media. Because social media, as you say, is it's the ultimate cloud. It's, it's, it's how people can gather information about us willingly we're out there telling everybody our live stories, what we like, what we don't like, et cetera. We've given so much. Now, for, for someone in marketing, that's a, that's a study um, in statistics and target uh, segments that's unbelievable. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. From a marketing perspective, um, it's wonderful, and that's why Facebook's advertising platform is so great. Because sure. if, if you if you have a brand or you know your company's on Facebook, you've got the business page, and you really want to drill down and get to your exact target market in a compelling way for them to take mm -hmm. action. Sure, boy, um, you know if you're the right brand for Facebook, it's it's a really it's a great medium. But um, I love what you just said about. You know, there's all of this information, but it depends on in whose hands it, it you know, it arrives. Sure. Kind of reminded me of that old show. Um, I just uh, just totally forgot the name, but the whole chaos and Max. Well, get smart. Oh, get, get smart. smart, right? Chaos. It's yeah, kind right. of like, do we want to make? Do, do we want our data getting in the hands of chaos? Right. Which leads me to the whole issue with um, the movie around the turn of the year and, sure. and the whole. Um, uh, the Sony episode sure, absolutely. with yeah sure well Nietzsche you know chaos and order you know they kind of go hand in hand the dark and the light the whole good evil you know Star Wars everything information can be used so many different ways either for good or for for bad and um, again the impact of all these things that are coming to light are going to play a huge impact sociologically on, on cultures on um, Humanity yeah. as, a, as, a, as, a, as an entire system. Humanity is an ecosystem. It's not just you and I, and we do have our individuality. But as a collective, um, it takes on a whole other th thing. And how this impacts all of us is, is, is just amazing to me. It's just the tip of the iceberg. And where it's been, where it is now, and where it's going are... <laughs> They're it's just getting faster and faster. Everything is to the second, third, fourth, fifth, tenth power. It's just going faster and faster. Well, you know, and, and back to your point about the kind of good and evil um, aspect of it. You know, again, with the Sony episode and the emails all being leaked and, and mm -hmm. that just becoming just a, a huge thing with Korea supposedly being involved or not involved. Sure. Um, you know, then you take the situation where... Um, you have what I call that rallying cry, where a group can come together through social media 
to make a change. So for example, if we look back to uh, towards the end of 2014 with the whole incident in um, Ferguson, Missouri. Mm -hmm. And after that happened, um, seemingly, I think overnight, there were rallies that um, emerged in cities all over the US. Oh, yeah. And so it was spreading that message out very quickly. And then here just in our own community, and we did mention this on one of our previous shows, but the impact of our local community coming together for a family in crisis with a young man um, who had been missing, mm -hmm. um, Brogan Dully, and um, just the outpouring of um, you know, donations, people volunteering their time to go sure. out and search and prayers and all kinds of things. I mean, the ultimate social call to action, uh, if you will. Um, I, I, I flash back quite a few years to Libya and when they were having their, their small revolution. Mm -hmm. One particular, they, they, they targeted everything back to this one particular young lady who used her phone and, and rallied such um, solidarity around this issue that, that they actually basically won the little peaceful protest slash war that they had because they were literally able to overthrow um, something just by uniting. Right, and which getting is, the which message is a, out. And getting the message out. So yeah. again, these, these social media platforms are amazing as to what they're able to do. And even though that they're gathering information about us, let's, let's face it, I, we talk about transparency and about how privacy, and in fact, it's interesting because I think it was, it's iPhone now that is working where it's been in the past, how about gathering all this information now, the new generations of the phones, et cetera, are gonna be all about helping you. It's going the other way now, helping you keep your privacy and having more elaborate filters and, and better ways of keeping information you don't want to get out to yourself. Well, but you know, that gets us to a different area, right? So in uh, some of um, Brian Solis's writings, he talks about the accidental narcissist. Mm -hmm. So that re in reality, social media has caused us to be promoters of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that for a lot of us, we kind of get off on the number of likes we got on a post, oh, right? Sure. Or, or um, you know, Instagram, how many people really liked our photos. Absolutely. And I, I really see that, especially um, with the younger generation too, younger um, uh, Generation Z, maybe the lower end of the millennials, but really kind of finding some self-worth. I mean, you hear terms like, oh, she's Insta-famous, right? Mm -hmm. So on Instagram, followed sure. by so many people. Right, right, right. And um, th that's, uh, you know, it, again, we were talking before the show opened, what was life like 10 years ago even? Well, people were not necessarily promoting themselves like that publicly because mm -hmm. you would, you know, somebody would probably put you in your place and say, whoa, you're a little too full of yourself. But, yep. you know, today, we, we do have accidental narcissists. Sure. So, um, well, to quote an old song, you're nobody till somebody likes you, right? Yeah. It's, it's loves you, actually. But. I was going to say, that's what threw me. I thought, wait a minute, that sounds kind of familiar. That's kind of roomy-ish. No, no, I'm sorry. Not, not with sorry. likes. But, uh, but, you know, that that's, and you're right. So, so there is a backlash with people wanting more privacy. And we yeah. did talk a little bit about that last time with trends. But um, so, so you look at um, some, uh, there are kind of two, two phenomena that are rising. Number one is um, the ephemeral uh, sites like Snapchat, right? Mm -hmm. So privacy in that you can say whatever you want, share whatever that picture is, and supposedly in so many seconds it's going to be gone, mm -hmm. right? So people c can be themselves, but then they know they've got the privacy that it's gone. Mm -hmm. Not really gone, folks, but anyway, for the sake of this conversation, yeah. anything can be re-resurrected re right. re and brought back. Um, and then, so you, you have those things, but then you also have these new sites that are, um, that are springing up, like Whisper and Secret, where in Yik Yak, mm -hmm. where people truly can be anonymous. Mm -hmm. So I got on Secret today just to play around with it. Oh my goodness, that is really interesting. Really? Really I interesting. I haven't done that. Yeah, I could see where it could be very addictive too. Um, and, it, and you truly can be anonymous there because when you sign up for Secret, they um, automatically give you just a random username and password. Hmm. So there's no, you know, no true persona there at all. Mm -hmm. But uh, but anyway, so so yeah, I, I, I it, and that's what makes everything so complex and so complicated. On the one hand, we're craving privacy and we're going to some of these anonymous mm -hmm. sites. 
On the other hand, and maybe it's a generational thing, we do have these accidental narcissists that really want to share stuff. So having said that, I, I also wanted to share um, some data. Um, so Pew is, mm -hmm. is a big research group, mm -hmm. and um, the data is just a couple years old, but I, I still think it's very impactful. Um, they're basically saying in, a, in, in this research study that teens are sharing more information about themselves on social media than ever before. So this is 2012 data. If we were to flash forward to today, I'm sure these numbers would be just through the roof. But for example, 91% um, of them post a photo of themselves. 71% uh, post their school name. Mm -hmm. And I can remember even, you know, six years ago, that was like taboo. You know, don't ever put your school name because then somebody, you know, stalker can sure. hang out at your school and wait for you to come out and all right, of that right. kind of stuff. 71% um, post the city or town where they live. And 53% um, post their email address. And uh, now this one's still small, so I guess there's a little bit of a fear in, in teenagers, only 20% post their cell phone number. Mm. But that's up um, just from the previous four years. It used to be 2%. Yeah. So going from 2% to 20%. Today, I'm sure all of those numbers are probably pushing 90. Yeah, or, or, or <clears throat> more things. I mean, I've just heard so much stuff about it. And not having kids, I, I you relate to the, that whole uh, demographic, if you will, but um, kids are pretty bold about stuff and and what they what they post and and um, you know we've touched base on a lot of different things about how how kids are and how parents probably wish they were a lot more protective about what they you know as as a parent you you could be fearful very easily about saying hey guy you guys you know, given and and I know you speak to this off, uh, often um, about making sure that you educate your kids to, to think through some things before they start posting information or, or worse um, on yeah. their and, and how it could impact them um, personally and or information in the wrong hands so to speak yeah absolutely um, you know it, and what they don't realize or what they're not thinking about is that it's collective and it's sure. lasting right. and it's that whole um, concept of digital footprint that yeah. whatever they're saying is is just staying out there and it's connected to their name or you and, don't know where it goes once it's once it's been collected it could be stored I mean Facebook's kind of the ultimate cloud anyway, isn't it? If, you know, all this information is going somewhere and we're posting it and after after it leaves Facebook, we don't know what happens to it. Well, in that At least I don't know what happens to it. <laughs> I wish I did, but... Only Mark Zuckerberg knows what happens to it. You probably but, so. Uh, <laughs> you know, and especially for teens as they're getting ready to, apply, you know, go off to college, mm -hmm. um, maybe get their first jobs, and that's... that Reputation management is just, just a huge, huge sure. piece. Um, I think that... You know, when we take a look again at that at the younger generation, um, those digital natives that really have grown up communicating in all of these ways, um, you know, it's it's just going to be really interesting to see how does that play out for them mm -hmm. in the workforce, and especially um, in a workforce that's multi generational. Mm -hmm. You know, so on the plus side, you could say, well, some of these kids um, are really great at multitasking. Mm -hmm. You know, and, sure. and, and that's a positive. Um, on the other hand, we could say that if they're so used to communicating through, you know, short sentences, tweets, texts, et cetera, are they going to know how to read body language, how to look somebody straight in the eyes when they're talking to them? Sure. You know, and, and hold Absolute, a conversation. Absolutely. Interpersonal communication. Interpersonal communication. There's some great comedy movies that are they're written to this. Um, <laughs> Some great comedy movies about how all of a sudden you know everything is distilled down to syllables and you no longer have you know lengthy communication or at least in my case like diatribal communication <laughs> um, or long lengthy run on sentences. But I think there's there's something to be said for that because um, there there is an impact that people have when when they speak and and if you take the interpersonal piece out of that now you're now the, the devices. Um, I'm going to tell a little anecdote story. So I'm in the bank mm -hmm. and I'm getting some, you know, doing some bank business. And I sp speak to the teller and I'm saying, hey, well, it's at least nice to have somebody face to face because I can't get anybody to answer a phone call. I'm talking to, ro you know, robotics and automatons all the time. She goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, especially banks and especially companies, they don't want to talk to you anymore. There's no customer service. And now it's, it's kind of been reversed where um, companies would much rather you spend your time trying to get through to them than they would servicing you. Yeah, that's, so a, that's a good point. It takes a real disconnect 
And devices are awesome, but again, it's that <laughs> for good or evil. Um, there's so much good to it, but yet it can go just the opposite way. So it's it's interesting to see how, sociologically speaking, how this is going to impact, especially as you say, the, the kids that have been brought up in this digital world. Is it going to balance out? Is it going to get tipped off to one side, or is is the opportunity that's that's going to be uh, available? to this younger generation, just to have all this amazing, you know, they talk about the dumbing down of America and they talk about the dumbing down of the world, so to speak. But with all this access to information, it, I think it's gonna balance itself out at some point. I'm, I'm, I'm a positive person, my cup's always kind of <laughs> half full, if you will. Um, and and I, 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 I'm a positive person too, and I, I agree that it will have to balance itself out, yes. it just will. But I'll tell you, you know, the other issue, that I see a lot of um, is is the loss of civility in communication. So even if we're talking about online communication, um, some of the comments that people make publicly, let's say on a Facebook mm -hmm. uh, page, maybe on a new site in you know in their comment section on on a story. Tweets. Well, you know, and I've seen some even some local cases um, where. The things that people say mm -hmm. can be incredibly mean sure. and nasty and illegal. Um, there's an incident, again, in our local area where um, there is a, a, a panhandler that mm -hmm. is out and about. Mm -hmm. And so someone took it upon themselves to post in a, a local Anderson, Anderson Township page the person's picture, you know, trying to alert everybody, which mm -hmm. is fine. You look out for this guy, et cetera. But the comments in terms of what uh, folks say they will do to the person when they find him, and they mention oh. kind of their weapons that they happen oh to own. My God. And I, I just think this is public. People can see who you are because it's Facebook. Sure. They can click on your profile and you know harness some information um, sure. out of that. Um, I'm just shocked. At, I, I just think people forget that they're in a public forum and because these are public pages, right? So when mm -hmm. it's a news story or, or you know, et cetera, it's public. And I think um, people are sitting there on their phone or their iPad in their own little room without anybody around, forgetting that really the whole world is watching. You know, I noticed that a long time ago. I noticed that at the advent of, of emails when people would just go on in these long, huge, if they'd be responding to these threads about whatever was going on. And often it wasn't business, it was more kind of community-based stuff. Uh -huh. And people were just bold enough to say anything. And it, it these and banters that would go, to all. oh my <laughs> God, and hit reply to all. Oh my gosh, the, the things that people would say. And it was like, you would never say that to someone's face. You yeah. just wouldn't do it, but you, you, you hide behind this exactly this wall of, of, of protection, if you will. It's kind of like you know when you're driving and somebody's cut you off or something and you yell at them through the window, you feel real brave. But if the window were rolled down and you saw them face to face, and would, yeah. you, you wouldn't say those things. And, and as you say, the amount of civility and, and manners, I think that's, that's a whole other sociological thing that's changed quite a bit yet with folks. and how courteous they are and how mannerly they are. And I, I notice a lot with kids is that parents haven't really schooled them like, at least my generation was schooled with regards to that. You were, you were mannerly and you, you tried to, you did that no matter what, you just, it's just part of it. Whereas, wow, kids now, they're, just, you know, they're, they're very bold and treat the adults like not as elders or anybody that knows anything. They just kind of, oh, kick you in the shin and give you an elbow and <laughs> get out of my way, adult, get out of my way. I got I to gotta go over here and play or something. Well, there's a, there's a lot of great kids out there, too. Oh, I know, sure. But, but, but I, I, I know what you're saying, though, it, it's kind of like two, two parallels, right? So there's a change maybe in, in, in how kids are respectful, sure. you know, just in, in general, maybe. Yeah. And then you have this, um, you know, technological increase in, in communication that is just you know, amazing, you kind of put those two together, and, mm -hmm. and if you do have someone, whether it's a, a teen or an adult, you know, and they are the kind of person that is going to be rude and mean and a bully. Sure. Um, you know, in, in 1975, they would have done this on the playground. Mm -hmm. Now they, you know, they do it through social media. So I think it's just a, another method for evolution. people to be who they, yeah. you know, were going to be. It's kind of an evolutionary process now. They have different tools to be a bully with it. And exactly, yeah. exactly. The digital playground instead of the sandbox. 
And just get to more people that way. That's the only unfortunate part of that is that now yeah, they that have is true. access to so much other getting. If you want to ruin somebody's reputation, you can, whether you're a kid or anybody for that matter, you can, you can plant some seeds that really uh, go far. Yeah. And actually, and that is a great segue. Um, I think one of our future shows will be on um, reputation management and, and digital digital branding because mm -hmm. if you do have a situation where somebody is out there trying to kind of bring you down or tarnish your brand a little bit, whether sure. you're a business or a person, you know, what are the things that you can do to be proactive? How do you tell your story from your perspective so mm -hmm. that's the one that shines and not anything else? Sure. I think that would be a good topic. For the future. Be great topic, great topic, and pertinent, very, very pertinent. Because as as this whole thing grows and has as it, as everything evolves, again, it just gets faster and faster and more broad ranged to get to more and more and more people. I mean, I I, I, I do the flashback, flash forward kind of thing all the time in my head because we've we talked about this so much, and especially as this impacts society and impacts. I just go back just a mere ten years which is not long to me, ladies and gentlemen. It goes very quickly. Ten years, I go back 10 years and I remember when um, information age was just really starting to kick in and Facebook and a lot of things were really just starting to happen and, and so much was going and it just got faster and faster and faster. And the demands for, I mean, just the platform alone demanded time as you, as you get to, you know, as you would just, A, go through the learning curve and then once you, <laughs> you went through it. Learn that changes. Well, then everything just seemed to take off. Everybody had computers, everybody had devices, everybody had cell phones. It's going faster and faster and faster. The demand of time happened faster and faster and faster. On a business level, people were accessible all hours of the day. It wasn't like your pager went off or your, or, you know, your telephone rang at home or in your office. Now you are totally accessible all the time. So people obviously think, we can give them a call anytime. Hey. Mm -hmm. Hey boss, what are you doing? Call me at three in the morning. Well, I just was thinking about this and what are you doing awake? Well, I couldn't think because I'm thinking about work. Okay, well, I'm sleeping. I'll talk to you in the morning. <laughs> you know. But the demand more and more and the acceleration, and then I guess for me sociologically, personally speaking, how is that going to impact society? How is it going to impact you as a person, as a business person, as a mother, as a whatever, you know, anything else that you do, the demand of time and the, and the amount of stress that that now plays upon one's psyche. Right. There's so much to that. And now fast forward 10 years. Right. And, and, and yeah. You know, it's going to be a lot different for us as from different generations. How, are, how is it going to affect these kids? Where, where, where is this all going to end up? And that's why I say this is, this is, this is an interesting topic. And, yeah, stress um, and anxiety. <laughs> well, and how are you going to manage that? Exactly. Now, exactly. Now, not only do you have to manage social media and your job and your family and your friends and you know, all of these platforms that you manage, you've got to manage this, you know, and keep yourself centered and keep yourself balanced. So lots of great yeah, that's stuff. like those, uh, the text messages I get in the middle of mass from Amazon saying, you know, your book on world history has just been delivered. <laughs> well, all great stuff, ladies and gentlemen, fodder for many, many more conversations here at Digitally Speaking. So on behalf of Ms. Michelle and myself and ACTV, we'd like to thank them and thank you, the viewing audience, for, for visiting us and keeping your eye on Digitally Speaking. Um, we'd like to bid you adieu for now, but stay tuned for more episodes. Thanks for joining us today here at Digitally Speaking. And stay stress-free. Stress-free. <laughs> <laughs>